Well, finished the uh, first part of my morning routine, which is studying the Bible a little bit, um, reading a book, some on being a biblical husband, and another book, a theology book, um, studying right now the attributes of God and the, the love of God. And next, I'm going to work on my musical fitness to practice technique and then choose which of the 100 plus songs that I have for all of my singers that I'm going to try to practice today. I'm not sure which songs I'll choose yet. Hmm, I'll let you know. Alright, so I'm here at my keyboard to practice this morning. Uh, I have over there a nice little piano, but my family's still asleep, so I practice on the keyboard, usually early in the mornings, and I begin with some uh, stretches that I got in a list from Dr. Gail Berenson. Um, just trying to stay well, you know, trying to avoid injury, be healthy, and I've been practicing um, scales in mirror image, so I would do like D major with the left hand. And then I would do the mirror image of that with the right hand, which ends up being like a really strange version of B flat major. It's B flat major, but you saw it on D. So it ends up being like D Phrygian or something. But it feels the same way in both hands. And um, it's helping me a little bit to increase the flexibility of my wrist with my left hand which has traditionally been like stiff as like a brace or a cast, so that helps them. And then I, if I want to play with the sound on, I'll put on the headphones, but a lot of times I just play either silently or barely even touching the keys, because it makes me listen in a different way and sort of imagine the sounds, um, so when I hear them out loud later, I can um, like compare it with my memory and it, I think it's increasing my anticipation and my awareness of the different intervals and harmonies. Just arrived in my parking spot in the garage. Not like it's reserved or anything, but I found a spot, so I am blessed. Finished listening to a podcast a sermon by R.C. Sproul as I was driving in. If you don't know who that is, you can look him up. You'll either really like him or really hate him, <laughs> depending on your worldview. All right, time to go play for some singers. Usually on my walk in, I will work on uh, Duolingo. I'm trying to learn French. So all you people out there who parle Francais, don't make fun of me <laughs> as I take these baby steps towards fluency. I leveled up in Duolingo. I'm very proud of myself for that. I have a new little icon for my uh, progress. And I learned some new words. No, I'm not gonna demonstrate them right now. Don't be silly, this is live. Uh, I'm just waiting for my first singer of the day. You can hear her now. Doing those crazy singer warm-ups that they all do. Whew, here goes nothing. Yeah. <sighs> so I've had my first lesson. Mm -hmm. This is Charlie, the man behind this video series. Oh, okay. This is... Are you speaking today? Hello. Oh, you are speaking today. It's Megan, the woman behind Charlie's business. <laughs> Heading up the stairs now to burn some calories in my next rehearsal. Rehearsal over. Now it's down the 32 steps. Back to the first floor for my next lesson. I don't know why people take the elevator. I get to see the sun burn like half a calorie. And I guess those are the only two benefits of taking the stairs. But the elevator is really slow here. Yeah, I'm already to studio class now. I'm gonna listen to 17 singers sing like a bunch of monkeys for a couple minutes. And that's just the warm ups, right? Anybody wanna say hi? Finally, it's lunchtime. 
I'm really excited because I'm eating some food that my wife cooked and if you've ever had my wife's cooking it's pretty good and I'm also reading through a dissertation about Marvin Blick and staff if you don't know who that is he's a really well respected piano teacher and I think it's good reading because it talks about some of the things that he's accomplished and some of the things that he would say with his own students and it's just inspiring to see what a master teacher would say and how they would interact with their students of all different levels. So, lunchtime. I got my last lesson of the day, starting in about a minute. This little kid is so cute, but he always tells me that he likes Beethoven and Batch and Mozart, and I've been trying to train him for over a year how to say those composer names. He just doesn't understand how the Achlaut uh, works in German. So <laughs> we'll see if I have any better luck today with Beethoven and Batch and Mozart. <laughs> Little kid's the best. I went in there and uh, he was talking about Beethoven. So I played him the slow movement to the Emperor Concerto, uh, the Muscovsky transcription. And he, <laughs> his jaw was like on the floor the whole time. He's like, oh, that was so beautiful. And I thought, you know what? It really is beautiful. And I'm so impressed that the young person uh, can understand and perceive some of the meaning that's in that deep, rich, wonderful music. So I probably will try to play the Emperor Concerto slow movement for some other students that I have this week to see if they have a similar reaction. All right, it is now 8.15. I'm done teaching. Let's go home.